What's going on, Minties? This is Omar from Near Mint Condition, and today I'm going to do a quick overview of the newly released Savage Sword of Conan Omnibus. So, please stay tuned. All right, let's check this out. What is Savage Sword of Conan? Well, first of all, it is a different series than Conan the Barbarian by Marvel Comics and also Conan by Dark Horse. This is a reprint of the magazine. It originally was published by Curtis Magazine back in 1974. Due to the popularity of this wonderful series, Robert E. Howard's story started appearing in this. So let's, let's actually, let's look at this. Look at this. Uh, that's from the original cover. I went with the variant instead of the cover, the direct market cover, because I thought both covers were gorgeous. But, you know... Might as well give somebody else a chance. But honestly, I don't really collect direct market variants. That's not me. When you watch my Avengers overview, you'll see what I mean. Because I am not about the DM life. Unless John Cassidy. Sorry, man. Had to go with the classic cover. But let's look in here. And this is the build of the book. Very similar to what the first Conan Omnibus is like. Okay, let's open it up. So, originally, these stories were published by Curtis Magazine, and then eventually Marvel, that owned Curtis, decided to start it publishing under its own label. So, the reason they started doing this is because, here's an introduction right here by Roy Thomas. Man, it's like so many Roy Thomas books I've gotten. They wanted, um, sorry, back to my train of thought. The reason they started doing this was they wanted to start doing more adult-oriented Conan stories that they really couldn't publish in the Marvel comics. So these, when they originally came out, were magazine size, kind of like the Creepy and Eerie or Mad Magazine, that big. Um, so if you could probably tell here, the art is Barry Winsor Smith uh, and written by Roy Thomas, so very similar to the original stuff that, was, that I showed you in the Conan the Barbarian book. Did that say the Frost Giants? So, yeah, okay. I, I have not read any of this stuff. I just know a lot about it because my friends um, really dug it. So this is all new to me. Um, I know that they borrow heavily, more so than the regular comic book with uh, from Robert E. Howard's novels, which, cool, I've read those. So, Man-Thing. What the hell is Man-Thing doing in here? Hmm. So, so, okay, getting back to this. What does this collect? Well... This collects Savage Tales 1 through 5, Savage Sword of Conan 1 through 12, and the special number 1. Not a lot, right? No, not a lot at all. Nothing but black and white art except for the covers. Because what I'm about to tell you might keep you from buying this. There are 235 issues of this magazine. Very, very similar to uh, as big as Conan is. And if we're only reprinting 18 issues... Don't even want to think about how many Omnis that's going to end up being. I mean, yes, I'd like to say it's going to be 10 to 12 Omnibuses, much like Conan and Barbarian, but I really don't know at this point. And I really hope that Marvel goes through with reprinting all of this because it's really amazing that for the first time we have this. It's pretty cool. It tells you up here what where it's from, Savage Tales, and the date that it was published. So yeah, the this was canceled. This line was canceled in 1995, uh, and I'm not sure. And I'm not sure if they went into color back in the 90s. But yeah, the, so you get a cover that is all in color. Oh man, I guess that's in memory of uh, Robert E. Howard when he passed away, creator of Conan Cole and the Age of the Undreamed of. Man, it's pretty powerful. Uh, let's let's flip a little more through over here to get into the Savage Sword of Conan books. Okay, so here we have Savage Sword of Conan, Mark Wolfman, Roy Thomas, John Romita. That's a name we all are familiar with. And it looks like John Buscema on art. That looks like Red Sonja. Another looks like the same thing as the first page, Savage Sword of Conan 1. Okay, I guess that is also printed in the Savage Tales one. Mm, uh, I hate when Creepy and Eerie magazine um, collections double dip. But that's pretty interesting that this is also printed in this Savage Tales. Or is that just a preview? 
Let's see how many pages this is really quick. I'm also checking to make sure my book is in a misprint. Okay, so that ends there. Let's see where this ends. Because believe me, DC has screwed me over plenty of times. Okay, next issue, Black Colossus. So Savage Sword of Conan, Volume 2. Okay, so I guess it must be just like a taste of what tells of, or I'm sorry, what Savage Sword was supposed to be. Damn, that art is beautiful. Yeah, so black and white has never bothered me. I know it bothers some people. That's why some people can't get into manga, other than the right-to-left format style of reading. To me, it's never really bothered me. I think some artwork actually benefits from the lack of color. Uh, Frank Miller, for example. Mike Mignola. Yeah, and God damn, that's beautiful. So I've always been a big fan of this kind of art. This reminds me of my childhood a lot. Because because I didn't read Conan, I did read Cole, funny enough. What's over, over here? Man, that is gorgeous. Yeah, I've never read any of this stuff, so this is really exciting for me. And I realized that it's not magazine size, of course, because they had to trim it down for this omnibus. But uh, the price of the omnibus is $125. Said black and white might turn a lot of people off, might not be worth it, huh? I can totally see that. I'm just worried that Marvel won't stick to their guns and keep releasing these. Now, we have solicitations for Volumes 2 of both Savage Sword and Conan the Barbarian. Past that, we don't know anything yet. So, hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, we actually get the whole run. That would be so badass. That would be a huge library. I would need a freaking Kalax just for this. Who's that fine-looking lady? Red Sonya. All right. I, I have to stop there. I mean, it's Conan, right? All right. Let's look through here a little more. And what else is back here? Oh, wait a minute now. I love artwork like this that just catches my eyes that I have to go back to look at. Alex Nino, Roy Thomas. I thought it was Pete Craig Russell, just the way that uh, the first few panels were laid out. I don't know who this is. I really dig it, though. That was one of my favorite things about getting the creepy, eerie magazines or the Marvel horror comics or House of Mystery or House of Secrets was finding all these older artists that eventually went into drawing, like, superhero comic books. They were doing horror stuff beforehand. Damn, tell me that is not bad at... Look at this artwork. Good God. I can't tell if that's... John Busima or John Romita. Whatever it is, man, that is awesome. And I get it. It's not for everyone. That kind of uh, sketchy art style. Sorry, I just keep rambling through here as we are looking at this book together for the first time. Now, I was promised some titties in this book. So that's not the reason why I spent $125. Or sorry, half off of that at In Stock Trades, I swear. I see plenty of that uh, in other formats. I don't know where I'm going with that. My bad. Uh, but yeah, this was a, a lot more adult-oriented. I've always heard that it was more brutal. And like I said, there's a lot more nudity in here. So I was expecting to see a lot more when I was flipping through those pages. Maybe a uh, nipple here and there. I should not start a nipple counter on my channel. Jesus, I don't know what I'm going with this. I, I was just flipping through here and just... Uh, making time by talking about nudity because I'm an adult. Sorry, I have to st stop and admire the artwork so much. This um, really reminds me a little bit of Berserk, the way that it's drawn with the sketchy art style. Just the backgrounds, the layout of the characters. That is pretty badass, honestly. I mean, with okay, Conan's always been badass, but... Man, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with black and white. I think it's amazing. Oh, there's cosplayers back here. That's kind of cool. And here's that guy's artwork again. Kind of a little similar to 
Walter Simonson's art. Okay, let's look back here and look at some of the extra stuff. So here's the color pages all the way in the back. And what do we got? Covers. Damn, that's gorgeous. Boris Vallejo. And not very much. Tim Conrad. Oh, that's beautiful. And that's Barry Winter Smith. That's the from the Marvel Treasury edition. God, that's gorgeous. And that, if I'm not mistaken, is John um, John Buscema. Yeah. Barry Winter Smith. Oh, and that's the cover I went with, a Gabriel Del Otto cover. So somebody else ended up with the cover to, I believe it's issue five. or, or No, I'm sorry, Savage Tales of Conan number one. Now let's look at the binding of the book and the pages. So as you can tell, the binding is very nice. Lays down really good, and you can open up the pages really nice. No gutter loss. So that's that's good. The pages are really thick, too. So that's important with a book like this, at least for me. Here, let's pull it back closer. Because it's black and white, right? And when you hold it up, you don't want the art from the other side to bleed through. It's a little different in color. I don't know why. But for some reason, it kind of messes up the black and white artwork to me if the art on the other side can be seen. More so than if it was in color. That's it. That is everything contained in this omnibus. Let me know if you ended up buying it and which version of the cover did you go with. To me, it really didn't matter because both of them were gorgeous. Let me know what you thought of the book and if you were on the fence about buying it. and Or if you're going to skip it because, you know, black and white isn't for everybody. Again, this was Omar. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to tune into this channel for more content from the New Year Mint Condition crew. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.